What do you feel, uh, you know, without you being modest, uh, makes you great as a trainer? That I don't think about that anymore. I think that it's something that, hypothetically, if you could possibly do it, you say I want to do it, so I've done it, so I let it go. And I don't worry about it, because my key is to make sure my guys look good, my guys keep getting better, my guys keep growing. And you notice a lot of guys that win those awards, right? They take on 25 fighters, the fighters that they have before don't do that well, and and or they don't talk about them anymore. So my thing is that I'm not so involved in about the awards and accolades, because there is no accolade greater than my guys winning and being successful. So I have to keep pushing that. My follow-up question to you is, is, you know, now that you, you know, everybody notices your work, everybody notices the champions that you have, the, the, the sport of boxing is always buzzing, especially here in Dallas. Uh, who has inspired you as a trainer, uh, whether they be active or non-active, as far as uh, well, legendary yeah. training? Well, you know, I, I've been inspired by my boxing coach. I think nobody... The two, two older guys that inspire me the most are my boxing coach Taylor August, and also I like Nacho Berenstein. So I mean, I don't watch him, I don't, but I think it's just focus, his discipline, his technique, and how he gets those guys, and he pushes those guys to be great. His ability to teach counter punching, teach so much defense, that's, that's, that's great for me to see. My coach is exactly the same way. So those are the two guys who are older guys who motivate and inspire me. And also I was sitting down one day, Errol and I were sitting with Curtis Coach, and Errol's father asked him, he said, what is the difference between boxing today and boxing and you fight? He said, there are no teachers in boxing. So if you think about it, most trainers are not teaching, they're working guys out. So the guys in good shape, but the technique and skill are lacking. I don't believe in the, like guys say he has a good team. I think that's BS. The guy hit you with a bad punch. If you rotate your whole body on the punch, there's no way your body can take that type of pressure. So it's about it's a bad punch, not a good chance. You know what I mean? As a trainer, when you go into training camp, um, especially with you know superior athletes that you have, I mean, do you do you as a trainer try and work on new things from the previous fights, or if it's something that that you see in in uh, you know in the training camp that you feel that you want to work on, or is it just something repetitive? I mean, well, 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 first of all, I think we have to address the initial issue that they had in the first fight. Okay. Because if it was the issue in the first fight, the fight before, then it's going to carry over to each fight. So I first have to address the first issue of whatever they were doing wrong in the first fight. Then come up to whatever new and build and grow from that point. Because I think that you, if you constantly keep going and building, there are big holes. So you're going to take those holes with you. Somebody's going to eventually be able to fill them. So I think you have to constantly keep refilling the holes and keep getting better and better and better. And, and when I first started training, the guy asked him, what's the what's the weakest part of their game and that's what we're going to work on so don't tell me that we're going to focus on that and so when you address that weak issue you go to the next you know just keep so hopefully you can make a complete fighter